Today on Engine Power, we dedicate a whole show to what's behind the engine. The guys show you how to build your own drive shaft at home, how to install a clutch in an 03 Mustang Cobra, and a look at what it takes to upgrade the most popular manual transmission. There's more to high performance than just cubic inches. Sure, it all starts in the engine bay, but without a way to get it to the ground, well, you're just standing still. Choosing the right transmission and its components could mean the difference between improved launches or bruised egos. But what gearbox will work best with my engine? What about a clutch, bell housing, and cross member? Do I have to cut my floor? All key decisions that can be answered with one phone call. Good morning, American Powertrain. How can I transfer your call? This is American Powertrain. Robert Hall is the founder and co-owner. We can put a five or six speed gearbox in just about any classic muscle car. We're here in the warehouse where all of the building and pack out happens. Gray Frederick is the CEO and lead developer. His team of sales technicians, production engineers, and material handlers are all enthusiasts whose job it is to talk torque. Thousands of transmissions and transmission-related parts are shipped from their Middle Tennessee headquarters worldwide. Gray, tell me what the single most important service that American Powertrain offers. I think the cornerstone of our business has always been our ProFit transmission installation kits, Mike. Guy calls, gets everything he needs for a one-stop installation, right? Yeah, we want a guy to be able to take his tools out and in one weekend put a five or six speed in his car, be back on the road enjoying it. It all starts with manual gearboxes from Tremec Transmission. You'll find these in brand new Camaros, Corvettes, Vipers, and more, right off the assembly line. And for the aftermarket, American Powertrain is an elite distributor, where they are stocked, awaiting the next phone call and custom application. Yeah, you should have gotten the mount. Yeah. A typical phone call will go like, they, they know they want an overdrive transmission, they just won't know how to do it. We're going to sell you the transmission that's appropriate for your build. And a lot of customers who are calling, they don't know what they want. So they need somebody on the other end of the line that can tell them what the best steps are to take to, to build their car the way it should be. And beyond the gearbox, decisions like proper bell housing, pressure plate, speedo gear and cable, backup light harness, and the right cross member are all offered up by expert techs. Uh, what we're doing now in the 67 Cougars, we're replacing the steel cross member with an aluminum X-Factor cross member, gives you better ground clearance and better clearance for exhaust pipes. A lot of our transmissions go out of here modified on the outside. So if you have a Mustang or a Corvette or a Cuda, the transmission may start out the same transmission in the box, but when it goes out of here, it's very specific to your model. As the business grows, so do the applications, which is why American Powertrain has dozens of classics in-house for R&D. And now more customers can take advantage of smooth shifts thanks to their relationship with Summit Racing Equipment. By people starting to see us out there on Summit's website and then after the first of the year in Summit's catalog, it's uh, bringing attention to us from people who might not have even been able to find us before. And we're very excited about it here. It's really you know, had us sharpen our game to be able to turn things out at the volume that Summit demands. Heavy volume is combined with 24-hour tech support. And for the guys manning the phones, satisfied customers make their day. I want them to call me back and say, wow, Paul, this is insanely awesome. We're back at American Powertrain, where the motto here is, more gears equal more fun. That is certainly true for any of you guys restoring a classic muscle car, custom, or street rod. The three and four speed manual transmissions of the 60s and 70s just won't handle today's demands. Whether it be big power from modified LS crate engines, or the needed comfort and fuel economy that overdrive provides while cruising down the interstate. We've installed Tremec transmissions in our shops for years, from classic Mopars like this 74 Pro Touring Dodge Challenger, to our crazy over-the-top 570-horse Nissan Backbreaker, or our off-the-charts Mazda V8 project. Two things in common from those builds are the gearboxes. 
and the installation systems from these guys. And when the transmissions come in from Tremec, this is where American Powertrain starts with them. Gray, tell me about this upgrade. Okay, well, what Josh is working on down here is a Tremec TKO. That has been our bread and butter five-speed high-performance transmission for years. Uh, the transmission has been durable. It's rated for 600 foot-pounds of constant load, and it's been a great transmission for our customers. What we're seeing now is a lot of guys can now stroke a check for 800, 1,000 horsepower, lots and lots of torque. Some guys are simply putting in more power than these transmissions are rated for. So American Powertrain has come up with some upgrades that we can put in the transmission. We called it our Extreme Series. But again, the TKO is such a durable transmission out of the box. There's, there's only call for it at the upper end of what we're doing, which is very high powered street and, uh, and hobbyist drag racing. Gray, tell me what the differences are with these input shafts. Okay, well, as you can see here, this has kind of a dull gray finish. This is the original Tremec part. Uh, it's been heat treated. This part over here has been additionally rim polished and cryo hardened. When you cryo harden, you essentially take this part and freeze it, take it down to almost absolute zero, and bring it back up to temperature at a controlled rate. And what that does is it changes those compounds to a stronger compound. You get about 30% more strength out of the part. That 30% can make a big difference between failure and durability when you're talking big power. Very cool. It's almost a shame they go inside the case. It looks like a piece of jewelry. Yeah, they really come out looking nice and they also perform very well. All right, there's obviously a difference in the synchros. Yep, we actually uh, changed the synchros for our extreme upgrade. This is actually the Tremec original synchro. And this one here is the upgraded part. You can see they essentially use the same metal, but on the inside of this one, you've got carbon fiber. The carbon fiber acts as a brake, so it slows everything down more quickly, helps the transmission synchronize better at high RPMs. In addition to that, this stuff will not wear at all. We also upgrade the fork pads. This mic is a slider. This locks into the fork. When this fork moves back and forth, when your hand moves the shifter, that's what changes the gears. The original fork pads on these things are a little bit loose, and they're made of plastic, so if you put a whole lot of abuse to them, you can actually break them and wear them down. So we actually replace those with a billet pad, and that slider will lock in with a lot more precision on a billet pad. So you get more range out of the fork. You don't get any wear, so these things will last practically forever. You don't have to change them. And as I say... It engages the gear a lot smoother and, and secure. It's secure, it's smooth, it keeps this thing square to the fork. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple thing. But you know, when you're talking about a transmission that, that is uh, dependent on very tight tolerances, improving those tolerances can make a big difference. All right, Gray, you showed me the uh, upgrades for the extreme internals. How about the external case? Well, Mike, about 10% of our customers get an internal upgrade on their transmission, but probably 90% of our customers get an upgrade on the outside of the transmission so that it will fit the car. Um, we've mocked up here, this is the original transmission, the way it comes in the box. And you can see the shifter is a Tremec shifter. This is the original tail housing. I'm gonna have Josh lift that up. I'm gonna lift this one up so the camera can see. This is our Corvette tail housing. Like you saw in our 66 Corvette, this transmission has actually been modified so it'll fit the car. So the shifter box is on the side here. You can see that the shifter is lower and it's gonna fit right in the original four speed position in the car. So there's a lot of material missing from the bottom of the tail housing here, and also material missing from the uh, mounting pad. All that is to make the transmission easier to install and to give it an original look. Easy installation keeps the purist happy. That's right, and we do this for Ford, Mopar, Chevrolet, Pontiac, you name it. We have transmissions that are modified to fit all kinds of applications. Very cool. Well, we've done several installs in the shop with your transmissions, and finally being able to see what's inside them is a real treat. I want to greatly thank you for that. Well, thank you for coming in. We've enjoyed having you. All right. Coming up, projects you can do yourself, even in your garage, from a clutch upgrade to a do-it-yourself drive shaft. We're back at the shop and moving on with our drivetrain theme. Now this 03 Cobra was factory equipped with a Tremec T56 six speed. Factory power was 390 from a supercharged 4.6 liter dual overhead cam V8. 
Now this one has a few upgrades and used to put 478 horsepower down at the tires. The only link between the power and that transmission is the clutch disc. Now the main reason for clutch failure is slippage. That causes excessive heat, removes material, and puts hot slick spots on the flywheel and the pressure plate. This Cobra still has the factory clutch in it. That's the reason the car used to put down that 478 horsepower. When the clutch slips, the power drops. 13,476 of the 03 models were produced. They were only available with the manual transmission, had independent rear suspension, and like all Mustang upgrades, are more than readily available. Here's a little tip to get started underneath. Place a few rags between the tips and the rear bumper cover so you don't damage or scratch it. The first thing to come off will be the X-pipe. Four bolts at the rear flanges and four more at the manifolds. Are you hung back there? Nope, I'm just letting, letting you lead. There we go. Unbolt the starter from the bell housing. Disconnect the clutch cable. And four bolts attach the drive shaft to the flange. With those out, the shaft goes too. With the trans jack underneath, the trans cross member can be unbolted from the subframe. This will allow better access to the trans harness and upper bell housing bolts. Once removed, slide the trans towards the rear of the car and lower it, making sure all the electrical connections are free. With all the clutch dust visible and a burnt smell, Ooh, buddy. it's no surprise it shows all the signs of excessive slippage. Now it's glazed over better than your favorite donut, and you can see where the heat transferred from the steel friction surface to the aluminum housing. And the extreme hot spots lead to heat checking, which are actually cracks in the surface. So to avoid clutch chatter from an uneven resurface, we're swapping it out for this new Ford Racing replacement, along with an 11 inch center force dual friction clutch. Now the disc uses a full facing on the pressure plate side for drivability and a long life. Now for positive engagement and holding power, a carbon composite puck style on the flywheel side. Now the pressure plate uses Center Force's patented centrifugal weight system. As the RPMs increase, it pulls on these fingers, increasing the clamping load. With a new pilot bearing and Loctite on the ARP bolts, we can put the flywheel on the crank and torque the bolts to 70 foot-pounds. The disc goes up next and is held in place with the alignment tool. The last new part is the pressure plate. This next process is the most important. If you don't follow it, you pretty much wasted a bunch of money. The pressure plate needs to be tightened in small increments in a crisscross pattern. That will allow the mating surface to seat evenly on the disc, and when the pressure plate is cycled, it will keep an even clamping load. The rest of this Cobra goes back together the same way we pulled it apart. Now today's show was all about what's behind the engine, how important it is, and some good quality parts to use on your next project. The rest is up to you, so go put that left foot to good use. When you're building an engine, you have to wait to get your pushrod's length until late in the build. Well, the same thing goes for a drive line. You have to have the engine, transmission, rear end, everything in before you can measure for your drive shaft's length. Now, a custom drive shaft can get pretty pricey, but if you're a do-it-yourselfer, check this out. Summit Racing now offers drive shaft kits. Now, this one came to us in a 55-inch length. It's a steel tube that's 3 inches in diameter. It already has the U-joint yoke welded on and the U-joint installed on one end. Now for the other end, they include a U-joint yoke, U-joint, and a slip yoke. Now ours is 27 spline in this case. Now you can get them with larger joints or slip yokes depending on what kit you order. Now this thing is cheap, it's easy, you can do it in your garage, and I'm going to prove it. So here's my garage, here's my GMC truck project, and here we go. First, we want to take a measurement from the center of the U-joint cup on the rear end to the tail shaft housing. We got 45 and a half inches. Subtract the next measurement, which is from the tail shaft housing to the end of the output shaft. We got one inch. Now subtract the measurement from the center of the U-joint cup to where the tube will seat, one and three quarter inches. Finally, using the transfer case slip yoke, measure from the bottom of the splines to the center of the U-joint cup. Two inches, and subtract that as well. Our total is 41 and a quarter. Measure from the center of the pre-installed cup to 41 and a quarter. 
Subtract three quarters so the yoke has slip room on the tail shaft and make your mark. I like to use a chop saw for straight cuts on tube rather than a band saw since the blade tends to walk. Using a level on the rear yoke, mark the top of the tube and align the supplied yoke to it. Tap it in till it seats. Using two V blocks in a fixture, I can rotate the shaft as I weld it together. The next step is installing the U joint using a vise and installing the retainer clips. Finally, the shaft can be test fit into the vehicle by slipping it into the transfer case and seating it in the rear yoke. Our length is spot on. Back in the day, there was a process used to balance drive shafts using these basic hose clamps, but it was a process that took a lot of time to get right. Nowadays, find a local drive shaft shop, have your drive shaft trued and balanced, and that'll ensure that your tail shaft bearing and seal have a long life due to lack of vibration. We're not done yet. Using Duplicolor Prep Spray, will get the shaft clean. Now paint color is an option, but keep in mind, if you build your shaft for racing, you'll want to paint it white, so it's visual if it comes out on the track. We're using Duplicolor's 500 degree engine enamel to paint ours. Now the color is cast coat iron, and I'll put two coats on and let it dry. This one tested within specs on a balancer, and my truck seems to like it as well. So you save some money and earn some bragging rights because you did it yourself. Are you looking to improve the efficiency of building your next custom tubular set of headers? Well, Ice Engine Works has got you covered with their tack weld clamp set. Now, these will actually simplify the fabrication process by eliminating the traditional welding support jig. Now, they're made of stainless steel and provide a precise rotational support to get those joints nice and tight. Now, they come in a four pack and they have several different tube diameter sizes and you can get your can of clamps for your next project at Summit Racing for just over 100 bucks. Schumacher Electric has a product on the market now that anybody who owns a vehicle should have in their trunk. It's called the Portable Power Station. Now this thing will jump your battery off when it's low, inflate your car tire on the side of the road with the onboard high pressure compressor. Now it also has an inflator that you can inflate air mattresses with. Now it can power all types of different components with the 120 volt plug-ins or the 12 volt power outlets. Now this thing also has other features like an onboard work light and USB port. Now it's powered by an AGM lead acid battery that can be charged with the supplied wall charger or by plugging into the power port in your vehicle. The cost, right at 120 bucks. Do you like to make up your own plug wires or do your own automotive wiring? Well, if you're looking for a tool that'll help save you time and give you better results, this is it. It's Petronix Performance Quick Change Ratcheting Crimping Tool. That's right, no more tools to change out the crimping dies. They just simply slide into place. If you want to change them, you just pull them out. Now, the dies are made of zinc-plated chrome molly, and the body itself has a non-slip grip for ease of use. Now, the best thing is Summit Racing's got them in stock for 105 bucks. Now, that's all the time we got for today. We'll see you next time.